time. We cannot see it. We cannot touch it. But still, our entire life is shaped around it. Minutes, hours, years. We are born. We grow. We age. All find meaning in the flow of time. The greatest minds in history. Newton. Einstein. Hawking. They all kept circling around the same question. What is time? Does it really exist? Or is it just an illusion? But we have internalized living with time so much that it doesn't even occur to us to question whether it's real or not. But what if what we know is wrong? Now come, let's pursue this question together and ask ourselves, does time really exist? The human brain perceives time like a film strip made up of consecutive frames, past frames, the current scene, and the future yet to be watched. But this perception is not as clear or reliable as we think. While our brain processes and synchronizes events from the outside world, it experiences a delay of a tiny fraction of a second. So in fact, we never truly live in the moment. While we think we are experiencing the present, our brain is actually processing the previous moment. This shows that our perception of time depends more on how our brain processes information than on the reality around us. So does the moment we call now really exist? Or is it just a feeling of continuity created by our brain connecting consecutive events? Life is like a film made up of a series of separate frames but our brain leaves no gaps between these frames. It merges them all into a seamless reality. That's why what we call now is not a single fixed moment, but a perception constantly reconstructed inside our brain. Our biological clock also helps us perceive time. Our sleep cycle, our need to eat, our aging process, they are all regulated by internal timers in our cells. But this, again, is a measurement that belongs to our body. So, outside of this biological perception, is there really a time that flows in the external world? For a long time, there wasn't much doubt about the nature of time. According to Isaac Newton, Time was a universal and absolute thing that flowed at the same speed everywhere in the universe. Clocks could break, but time would not. To him, time was like a clock operating outside the universe. It ticked the same way everywhere. Past, present, and future. All progressed in the same order and at the same speed for everyone in the universe. According to Newton, whether you were on Earth or beyond a planet, time always flowed the same way behind everything. The flow of time would never change, no matter where you were in the universe. In Newton's understanding, time was independent of space and a fundamental structure of the universe that applied at every moment. This concept of absolute time gave people the sense that the universe was orderly, predictable, and always under control. But in 1905, a young physicist named Albert Einstein radically changed this understanding with his theory of special relativity. According to Einstein, time was not absolute, but a concept that changed depending on the observer's motion. A time span that felt like seconds for one person could be shorter or longer for another observer. This means that time can be perceived differently depending on the point of view of the observer of the same event. In other words, 
time doesn't move at the same speed for everyone. The flow of time can change depending on the observer's speed and the gravitational field they are in. The twin paradox is one of the most famous examples of this situation. Imagine there are twins. One stays on Earth, the other travels into space at very high speeds and then returns. The twin moving rapidly in space would be younger than the sibling who stayed on Earth. Because as the observer's speed increases, time flows more slowly for them. Black holes, as regions with the most intense gravitational fields, dramatically affect the flow of time. Near a black hole, time flows much more slowly compared to an observer farther away. So much so that a few minutes near a black hole can be equivalent to years on Earth. For an observer staying close to a black hole, time almost slows down and flows at a very different speed compared to time on Earth. Einstein's revolutionary idea did not remain just a theory. It has been confirmed many times through experiments. For example, the fact that clocks on fast-moving satellites measure time differently from clocks on Earth shows that this theory also holds true in practice. Today, thanks to this theory, the GPS systems we use can function correctly. Because GPS satellites move at very high speeds relative to Earth, and at the same time, they are in a different position from the effect of Earth's gravity. Therefore, time on the satellites flows a bit differently than on the ground. And if this difference is not calculated, our GPS locations could be off by several kilometers. But then, hi, does time always feel like it flows forward? Why can't we go back to the past but constantly get pulled toward the future? This direction is always clear in our lives. We are born, we grow, we age. When an egg breaks, we don't expect it to become whole again. A cup of coffee cools down, but it doesn't reheat by itself. This is not only a result of our daily experiences, but also of the fundamental laws of the universe. Here, the key concept we encounter is entropy. According to the second law of thermodynamics, in a closed system, entropy, that is, disorder, always increases. The general tendency of the universe is to move from a more ordered structure to a more disordered one. That's why we feel that time flows forward. The physical laws don't actually care much about the direction of time. Even if you reverse an equation, it still works mathematically. But in real life, events happen in only one direction. This difference comes from the direction in which entropy increases. According to some scientists, what we call the forward flow of time is actually just the direction in which entropy increases. In other words, the direction of what we call time may not come from a physical necessity, but from the statistical nature of thermodynamics. The first moment of the universe, the Big Bang, was in a state of extremely low entropy. Barrett number began from that moment on for this reason. Because entropy began to increase, and we found ourselves moving in the direction of that increase. After all this information, let's go back and look at the same question. Does time really exist? Some physicists cannot give a definite yes to this question. According to Julian Barbour, there are only now moments in the universe there is no such thing as the past or the future. There are only disconnected, motionless nows, and we feel as if we are moving through them. 
Brian Greene offers a different perspective. The past, the present, and the future may all exist simultaneously in different regions of the universe. According to this view, time is not a flow. All moments already exist, and we are merely witnessing them in sequence. So maybe time is not a fundamental component of the universe, but just a construct created by our perception. Time. Perhaps the greatest illusion created by the human mind. We count years, minutes, moments, but maybe they are all just a single infinite now. So what do you think? Does time really exist? Or do we only think it exists because we have gotten used to living with it? Write your comments below. We're curious about your thoughts. And to continue this mysterious journey of science together, don't forget to subscribe to the SparkThink channel. See you soon.